Hey, it's Corrine for the Wild Orchid Crafts Design Team and today I have a cute little mini album to share with you and I have a full tutorial on how to make this little tutorial. I use the Graphic 45 Gilded Lily Collection, their journaling and ephemera cards, the 4x6 cards in the pack. And let me just quickly show you what the album looks like. So here's a journaling card here, and this is from the tags and pockets and um, one of the cut aparts. And then when you flip it open, there's spots for photos on both these pages, four by six photos on here as well, and even tiny photos or journaling on these cards. So every page has two photo mats, and then the back as well. So there is my book. If you'd like to watch the full tutorial on how I make this, then please stay tuned. I will link all the products for Wild Orchid Crafts in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching. Okay, so the mini album that we're going to be making today is centered around these ephemera and journaling cards by Graphic 45. This is the Gilded Lily collection, and I got these from Cut at Home. I'll put a link in the description box for where I got these. And these are four by six cards. So my entire album is designed around these cards. So I want these cards to sit on my mini album pages with a little bit of a border. So I cut my pages, again, these are four by six. I cut my pages to be four and a quarter by six and a quarter, which we will go over these measurements again. But I needed to know what my page size was going to be in order to make my hinge. And today I'm using the Kathy Orta Hidden Hinge System. I will put a link in the description box below. There's tons of tutorials. If you search for Kathy Orta's Hidden Hinge System, you'll find tons of tutorials. And there's different variations on the tutorials. I'll put a great tutorial also from my sister Scrapper down in the description box. She goes over how you can do different sizes. I'm simply going over the size to make this album. So if you want to follow along with this exact album, then um, I'll be giving the measurements for that. And you don't have to have these 4x6 cards to do so. You can just cut down any paper you want to 4x6. So we'll go over more of this um, in a little bit. The first thing we're going to do is our hinge system. So I've already got one started. In this video, to save time, I'm going to fast forward through anything that I think um, is not necessary for you to see, but I will try and make sure that it's detailed enough. I've written this down. Again, my page is six and a quarter tall. I just need to worry about the height right now. So I need to make my hinge a little bit smaller, so I made it six and one eighth inch. Okay. So let me cut my paper down to six and one eighth inch. I'm using some craft paper from Hobby Lobby, and this is a very thick paper. So you'll see me score it quite a few times. So six and an eighth, and I'm leaving it at the 11 inch. I already know because I've already figured out the measurements ahead of time that I will not need to cut the 11 inches at all. I'll be using all of it. You can always cut it down afterwards if you're making a different book. But again, I'm just going over the measurements for this book. Um, my sister Scrapper has a great video on how you can do different sizes. So like I said, I'll link that below. So again, for this book, I've already determined that I need to start at the one and, qu one, and one quarter inch score. And simply because I've already figured this out, I know that I'm stopping at the nine and three quarters. So I'm going to go ahead and score that now just to give myself a marking. So back to the one and a quarter, we're simply going to score over one half inch all the way down up until three quarters inches. And the reason being is for your hinges, you need a half inch on either side and you adhere them together then you have to determine how large you want your gusset to be. I like adding a lot of flowers and dimensional stuff to mine, so I make mine a half inch. So that's why it's half inch increments. 
So we're scoring in order to make the flanges that our papers are going to adhere to and then also the space for our gussets and you'll see as it comes together. So the measurements again starting over we're starting at one and a quarter this first large spot here is going to attach to our covers of our book. Okay so one and a quarter we're going to cut this is the Martha Stewart scoreboard so it is in one eighth inch increments so you simply count over four each time. So starting at one and a quarter, we're gonna go to one and three quarters. Two and a quarter. Two and three quarters. Three and a quarter. Three and three quarters. Four and a quarter. four and three quarters, five and a quarter, five and three quarters, six and a quarter, six and three quarters, seven and a quarter, seven and three quarters, eight and a quarter, eight and three quarters, nine and a quarter, and our last one is nine and three quarters. Okay, we can put our scoreboard aside. And now, how you count them is the first two score marks are going to be a hinge and I'm making six pages so I need six hinges. So if you count over there's one two that makes one hinge that's going to be my gusset. Three four makes two hinges my gusset. Five six makes three hinges my gusset. Seven eight four hinges my gusset. Nine ten five hinges my gusset and the last two are going to make six. So that will give me a spot for six pages to adhere to. Okay? So now the next thing you want to do is grab out your tape. So I'm using quarter inch tape and I'm going to put it on the very first score mark. Okay? So our first half inch score mark and you want to place it towards the bottom of your score but not over or on your score mark. You want to make sure that it does not go over or on your score mark. Okay, so let me show you up close. I have it on my, we have this large flap that's going to attach to our book. I have my tape on my very first half inch score mark. Now I'm going to skip two and add it to the third one. So I'm skipping two and adding it, skipping two and adding it, skipping two, adding it, skipping two, Again, I'm skipping two and adding it to my very last, my half inch before the last half inch. And you want to go ahead and burnish down your tape. You want to use a strong double-sided adhesive. Okay, so now we need to fold on our score marks. So my very first score mark, the one and a quarter, I'm going to skip that one and go to the score mark right after where I added my tape. And I'm going to fold over on that. Okay, and I'm going to crease it with my bone folder. Make sure I have a nice crease. Remove my tape and then fold it back again where I just folded it. And then again, press it down. Okay, 
Now we're going to flip it over and press it down on the table and you can see that gives us our very first hinge and you want to really work that with your bone folder especially if you're using thick paper like I am. You really want to work that back and forth. We'll do that more in a little bit. So that's going to be our very first hinge that our paper is going to adhere to. So flip it back over. Again, the score mark after our tape, we're going to fold it over on that score mark. Crease it down. Remove your tape. And then just fold it straight back over again and it'll fold down nicely. I have a little extra tape here. Okay, so fold it straight down. Burnish it. Flip it back over on the back side and press it down to your table. Okay, now you're going to get that. Your next hinge. So again, you want to really crease that with your bone folder. So these are our two hinges. Okay, so we're going to do that again. The score mark after our tape, we're going to fold on that, crease it, remove the tape. Fold it again right where we've already creased it. Again, give it a nice crease. Flip it over. Press it down. And we've got our next hinge. Okay. We're going to continue doing this the entire way. I'm folding on that crease right after my tape. Because you, you need to remember that in between each of your hinges, is your gusset. So that's why we're skipping um, the fold here or the score mark here and we're going to the one right after the tape. Press it down on the table. Folding right after the tape. Folding it again where we've already folded it. Press it down on the table from the back side. And we'll do our very last one. We're going to fold it right past that score tape. And by doing this, we're training the paper exactly where it needs to fold. Removing our tape and then folding it again right where we've already folded it. Crease that down and bend it up. So now you want to really bend those both ways, back and forth until you get them nice and pliable. Do it back the other way. Okay, so here is our hinges. This flap and this flap will attach to the front and back covers of our book and these are what our pages will attach to, okay? For the book that we're making today, you don't need, normally you would add double-sided tape on both of these flanges. We're not going to do that today because we're only going to be attaching our pages to one side. So we only need to, here's one that I've already started, we only need to attach our score tape to one side or our double adhesive to one side. So as you can see, I have it all on the same side except for this one. I thought I would do that one on camera. So I have no tape on these sides. So I'm just going to add my tape to this side. You do not want to add your tape over the score mark. Okay, and then make sure to burnish it down. So again, when I fold them this way, I have tape on every single one of these, but not the other side because we'll be adding paper to that. Okay, the next thing you want to do is turn this over 
and add tape to the entire back side. However, you don't need to go over these creases. So what I did is I added tape to every single one of my, there should be five of these half inch marks. I added tape to this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay, so I added a strip of tape down each one of those, and then I completely covered my my um, folds here with tape. You want to completely cover these with tape because you want it to adhere very well. So there are my five pieces. And then here are my flaps that I added tape completely to both flaps. So to save time, um, I won't do that on camera, but as you can see, just add a strip down each one of these and then add as much tape as you need to to cover the entire flap. Okay, so now let's set that aside. Okay, so the next thing that we need to work on is our pages that are going to adhere to our book. Okay, and here's my page. I'm going to adhere it on this side of my book, and when it flips over, we will be adding decorative paper on this side. Okay, so my whole book is centering around these four by six cards. So I wanted this little book to be four and a quarter by six and a quarter. That way my four by six has a little bit of a border. But I wanted it to open so photos can be added here, here, and on the back side. Okay, so in order to do that, we need it to be double than four and a quarter by six and a quarter. The height needs to be six and a quarter, but we want our book to be double so we can score it and fold it in half. So that would be eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. However, when you do it that way, if, if it gets caught in the binding, it's going to be a little bit harder to turn. So what I like to do is take about an eighth inch off one side. So let me show you how we make these. Again, I'm using the same craft paper. I've already cut all of these out except I saved one for on camera to show you. So the height of our book is six and a quarter, so we need to cut it at six and a quarter. And now we can do one of two things. We can fold this in half, and once we do, take a little piece of it off, like an eighth inch off right here. Okay, so we can either fold it in half and then just cut a little slit off, or what I think is easier is, I figured out the measurements, cut it to eight and three eighths inches. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. Um, on the 11 inch side, I'm gonna cut it at eight and three eighths inches, which is one eighth inch shorter than eight and a half. So now we have a piece of paper cut to eight and three eighths by six and a quarter, and we're gonna score it at four and a quarter. So on the eighth and three eighth inch side, come in to four and a quarter and score. and give it a good crease with your bone folder. And now as you can see, we have just a tiny bit smaller on that side, okay? So the next thing we need to do, we'll set these aside. I have all of my pages cut. I have six pages cut and I have my journaling cards. We're gonna set those aside and we're gonna work on the cover of the album. So you're going to need two pieces of chipboard that are a quarter inch larger than your book. So again, my pages are six and a quarter by four and a quarter. So I'm making my chipboard cover six and a half by four and a half. I want them a quarter inch larger. So two pieces at six and a half by four and a half and you need a spine piece. You want the spine piece to be the same height as your front and back cover, so that's six and a half. And how I determined how large I needed my spine is once I've put my binding together, remember that 
these flaps will be attached to my book, so these essentially don't count. You want to just fold them over and see what your binding is. Mine here is two and five eighths. So I'm going to make it a little bit larger and make my spine at two and seven eighths. So that's about a quarter inch larger. You can do um, much larger if you want, or you could do it the same as the spine, but it doesn't give you any room between your front and back cover to your first and last page. So again, my spine here is two and five eighths, and I'm making my spine at two and seven eighths. Okay, so we're gonna need two pieces of paper. Again, eight and a half by 11, we're going to attach them together in the middle. I'm going to use some half inch tape and just run it along the very bottom of one of my pieces. Burnish that down. And then I'm going to remove this and attach this piece right over that. And I like, I don't want it too far over, I want it to meet just where the tape is. So it's completely adhered down. So I'm using my tape as the guide. Okay, and now press that down. And now this is where we're going to place our spine, right here um, where the paper meets. What I determined ahead of time also is these are six and a half tall. You need about two inches more to fold over. You can do a little less if you want. So um, mine is eight and a half inches. That's gonna give me an inch on this side and an inch on this side to fold over. If you wanted to do a half inch, you could do a half inch. The reason I did an inch is this is really thick, thick paper. So I think I would have a hard time folding over a half inch. That's why I went ahead and did an inch. Okay, the other thing that I'm that I'm using, and um, this is Kathy Orta's idea. This is a piece of Tyvek. It's those mailing labels that, that you get. My sister is a secretary, so she just removes the, she cuts off the um, return address label and saves any of these pieces for me. So they're the kind that you use to send in the mail, um, or you can buy them blank. You can buy them to send yourself from Office Depot and you can get a box of them. If you know somebody who's a secretary, just have them cut them apart and you know, throw away the return address label and save the pieces for you. So this is going to go underneath my spine. That way when the album's fold, folded open and closed, it's gonna give a little bit extra security on either side. So that's the first thing I like to do is attach my spine to the Tyvek. The Tyvek I cut to four and three quarters by six and a half. I always do it the same height of my spine. And then I just usually guesstimate. I just like a little, maybe an inch and a quarter on either side left over. That's up to you, it doesn't really matter. But I prepared that ahead of time with the tape. So I'm going to remove my tape backing and adhere that down. I'll do that in fast play. So I removed my tape from this side, but I actually meant to do this side, no big deal. I like um, side to side tape. Okay, and the next thing I like to do is I know that I have an inch left over on this side and an inch left over on this side. This is completely up to you. You do not have to do this, but I like to give myself guide marks just to make sure it's pretty even. So I'm just gonna mark in an inch here and an inch on the bottom. Okay, so even though my lines are not perfectly even, it's just gonna give me a guideline as to where to place my chipboard. So I'm going to remove the adhesive from the back and adhere that down. So the next thing I need to do is add my covers. If you've seen me make a mini album before, I use a little um, guide to help me get the 
distance between my spine and cover separated. You don't have to do that. You can eyeball it, but I like to use a little guide. It's just two pieces of chipboard and a very, very, very thin piece of chipboard added in the middle. So I have three pieces of chipboard, two of the kind that I'm using and a very, almost like a um, heavyweight cardstock. It's almost like the thickness of this, so it's not another piece of chipboard. And that's just because I like a little bit of space in between my spine and my front and back cover. Again, you can eyeball it, but you want to make sure that you're getting at least two thicknesses of chipboard away from each other. So when it folds up, it's not folding onto itself. If you butt it right up next to it, you're going to have it crack and it will not open and close correctly. So you want to leave a little space. Okay, so the next thing I like to do is you can see I have way too much extra. There's no need to have all this extra. It'll just cause a lot of bulk. So I'm going to use my ruler. You can eyeball this. I like to measure it. I'm gonna mark down on either side, just using my ruler width, and then cut that off. Now we need to add tape around all four corners, so I'll put that in fast play. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is really burnish down all where your tape is. I also added tape on the inside where I know my book is going to be meeting that. I want to make sure it's adhered very well. And I like to go around the chipboard with my stylus to score it so when I go to fold my paper it will fold a little bit easier so I'm just running my stylus right up against the edge of that um, chipboard okay, so we're going to mire all four corners you want to leave a little bit of a gap and mark it um, with a pencil or eyeball it but you want to mark a little bit of a gap and you want to leave about an eighth inch there. If you cut it too close, you're going to see the raw chipboard, which in this case we're using craft, so it wouldn't be horrible. But if you're using um, black paper, you'll notice that. So we're just going to mark out an eighth inch. I'm going to use my pencil to give me a guideline. You can eyeball this. Now we did add tape all the way to our corner, which we're gonna be cutting some of that off. It's It does waste a little bit, but then by doing it this way, you have uh, tape all the way to your corner, which I'll show you what I mean here in just a moment. Okay, so I left myself a little bit of a gap and then I'm just going to take my scissors and cut that off following my pencil mark. Now we have tape going all the way to the edge. Otherwise, you're kind of guessing where your edge is going to be. So even though you do waste a little bit of tape this way, you have, um, you can ensure that you have tape going all the way up to the edge. Okay, so now we're going to start folding on our score marks. Just kind of teaching that paper where we want it to fold, breaking the fibers. This is really thick paper. Okay, so I'm going to remove all the tape backing. And again, we have tape on the outside of the paper and the inside of the book because I want to make sure it's adhered down very well. I left an inch on either side because I'm using such thick cardstock. If I was only leaving a half inch, I might not need to put tape on the paper as well because when you fold it over, it should meet pretty much close to where that tape is. 
So I'm going to start with the long side first on both sides. Press that down. Go back over it with my bone folder. Really crease it down. Okay, I'm going to do that with the other long side as well. Press that down. And now we need to fold over these corners, otherwise we will have corners sticking out. So as you can see, there's excess there. So you just simply want to fold in that corner on either side. So let me, you, you want to tuck it in. And then that way when we fold it, it's tucked in there. You won't, it won't be bulky. So I'm using my, the edge of my bone folder and just tucking that corner in. Okay, so let me see if I can show you this on camera. That one's tucked in, and here's the side that's not. So I've tucked this side in, but I still need to tuck this one. So I go around and do that to all four corners. And now we'll fold over these corners. Press it down with your bone folder and do the last one. So now that gives us a perfect edge. Okay, the next thing you want to do is very carefully fold your covers very carefully. I'm barely pressing that in. You want to do that very carefully and fold it. Okay. Again, we're just training it to fold over and pressing down that paper. So very carefully. You can very easily rip this if you're not careful with it. So very gently just creasing on that and we're going to fold it over. Okay, so now we need to add our hinge to our book. Okay, and we're going to center it, leaving a little bit on the top and a little bit on the bottom. So I'm going to remove all the adhesive off the back. Okay, so I've removed all my heat adhesive off the back and we just basically want to center it on our spine and again, try to center it from top to bottom. Okay, and go ahead and press it down. Now you really want to make sure that's adhered well. Go in between all your pages. I like to take my brayer and run over it as well because it works those hinges as well because you really want those pliable. Okay, so now again we need to fold up on that paper and we want to do it slowly using our bone folder to really press it down but very gently. We're going to do that to this side as well. It's very easy to crack that paper if you press too hard with this, so just very gently run it across. It may not be able to show on camera, but I'm just doing it very gently. And just kind of fold them in, and here is our little book. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is open it back up. We want to attach our pages to them. And if you remember, we have 
one side that's a little bit taller or longer than the other side, I am going to have that part face up. Okay, so when it's this way, here is the shorter side. Hopefully the camera will pick that up. Okay, this is a little bit shorter. The reason I chose to do it that way is I'm planning on putting my journaling cards on the front page. The back page, I can cut down my paper to whatever size I want, so I can make it a little bit smaller. So again, here's the shorter side is gonna face the back. So let me just determine what's gonna be the front and back of my book. Okay, and here's going to be the front. So now I need to add my pages onto each hinge. Okay, so press them down, get them out of your way. And then you want to add it to the score line, but do not go over the score line. You want it to be able to fold back and forth. So I'm going to remove my adhesive backing. And I'm going to add it up to the score line, but not going over the score line. Okay, and then press it down. Press it down. Use your bone folder. Okay, now you do see that that um, overhang, but we're going to be covering that up. So I'm going to add the rest of my pages the exact same way. Let me do one more on camera. I'm going to make sure that my larger side is this way. going up to that score line but not all the way to it. You don't want to press it down against your spine and adhere it. You want it up a little bit. Okay, so let me do the rest of these and I'll be right back. So I've added all six of my pages and now I'm really burnishing them down both ways. I want to really make sure that I'm working those pages just to break up those fibers and make it be able to fold nicer. Okay, so now the rest is decoration. So this is what we have. We're gonna have our journaling card on one side. You're gonna open it up. I'm gonna place two mats in here and then photos can be added. And then the back will be decorative paper. Again, another photo can be added. Okay, so I will put that in fast play as I adhere these down. So I've adhered all my first pieces, all the journaling cards. I just used the same double-sided tape. Next thing I'm going to do is on the inside pages that are meant to be just for photos, I'm adding a white mat. So on the left side, which happens to be a little bit larger, I'm using a four by six mat. On the right side, I just cut the mat down a little bit smaller on the width. So it's three and seven eighths by six and I will adhere all of those down. So I've added my mats on the inside and these are meant to have photos placed on them. And now I will cut down my papers and add the paper to the back and the front and back cover. So here is my book. All I have left to do is decorate it. On the front cover I had one journaling card left over, so I added it um, on top of a piece of paper from the 8x8 collection, and I cut that piece down to four and a quarter by six and a quarter, and then I added the journaling card that's four by six on there. On the inside front and back covers, I added a piece that's a little bit smaller than four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And on the back, I added a piece that's four and a quarter by six and a quarter. So again, here's the journaling card. This is a four by six, a three and seven eighths by six, four by six piece of pattern paper, then the journaling card, four by six, three and seven eighths by six, so on and so forth. And again, these are four by six. So if you have any questions, please leave me a comment. I will have all the links to the products that I use down in the description box below as, as well as a link to Wild Orchid Craft. And I hope you stay tuned for the rest that I decorate the cover and um, the spine of the book.